All right, so for reference, we are in section 8.2 of our next book. Uh, there we go. And what we want to talk about today is solving equations, or at least solving some equations. And we talk about solving equations of one variable. And I mean, a lot of real world equations are going to have two variables in them. I mean, you've seen the, the sort of classic equations that you're used to, are things like this, y equals something involving x. So this is an equation of two variables. If instead of that y, we had a number, say four equals two x minus seven, now, this is an equation of one variable. And we, when we talk about solving an equation, we want to find an x value. And I'm going to put value or values because there can be more than one. That make the statement true. Because x is a variable. x can be anything, but most values of x will give you a false statement. Like if you decided, well, I want to let x be a zero, now, if you let x be zero, you get the false statement. You get the statement that four equals negative seven. So you're looking for x values that give you a true statement. And solving equations, we have One thing equal to another thing. The book envisions this as a scales. I envision it as boxes. And the first sort of technique we learn for solving an equation is that you can add or subtract the same number to both sides. Right, let's go back to our eternal example where we have, I don't know, apples. And on this side, we have a box that contains four apples. And on the other side, We have 2x minus 7 apples. 
So what this statement is saying is that while we have these boxes, they contain the same number of apples. If we add an apple into both the boxes, they still contain the same number of apples. Or if we add two apples to both boxes, they still contain the same number of apples. Or if we take an apple away, from both boxes, they still contain the same number of apples. And in terms of arithmetic, adding or removing apples is done via addition and subtraction. So let's give an equation that we can solve entirely using this trick. X plus four equals one. Or rather, this is going to be easier to picture if we don't have a bunch of negative numbers floating around. So let's say X plus four equals 10. And we have these two things that are equal to each other. And that's for every number that's representing numbers with dots. So on the right hand side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dots. On the right hand side, well, we have one, two, three, four dots, but we also have something else on the left-hand side. So we have an X and we have four dots and we want to know what X is. And we'll talk about this algebraically in a bit. But let's just start removing stuff from boxes. If we take one dot from the left box, and we also take one dot from the right box, those boxes still have the same number of dots. Remove another dot from the left box, and another dot from the right box, a dot from the left, a dot from the right, from the left, from the right. And now let's ask ourselves, well, what do we have in these two boxes? In the left-hand box, we've removed all the dots, so we only have X. In the right-hand side box, we have six. These boxes are identical, so X has to be equal to six. So, Trying to sort of take that and generalize it, if you have some expression plus a number equals another expression, let me use different shapes for our expressions, then we can, we talk about moving 
moving a around. We talk about moving a from the left and putting it on the right, or vice versa. We can subtract both sides and find that the expression on the left equals the expression on the right minus a. And again, the easiest example we can give for why we would want to do this is the example we did just give, where instead of having that kind of abstract rectangle, we have our variable x plus some number equals another number. And I'm not, um, we've introduced the negative numbers. It's not convenient to draw them, but we can have equations with negative solutions. And our goal is to solve, that is to find an x value that makes this equation true. So what we can do is we can subtract seven from both sides. And on the left, seven minus seven is zero. So the numbers just go away. Just like when we crossed everything out here and we only had x left. On the left, only x remains. It's on the right, three minus seven, is negative four. And so we've solved this equation. X equals negative four. And this is a tool we can use for when we want to solve an equation. For subtraction, Again, this is harder to draw with a, uh, with a box, but I suppose we can give it, uh, give it a go. Let's say we have a box, and this box contains X, and this box used to contain seven dots, but we subtracted them, so they're no longer in the box. We have x, and then we have the seven dots that we subtracted out of the box. Equals one, two, three, four dots. Well, now, now that this picture is kind of awkward, I don't really know what the, uh, what the done way of drawing subtraction is. I'll just say that just think we can undo addition via subtraction, we can undo subtraction via addition. We can add seven to both sides. On the left, we have x. On the right, we have 11. 
So this addition and subtraction is a tool that is available to us. It is not the only tool. And the book is a little hazy on this. I mean, it doesn't lay out in like a bullet check this to the exact material that we're covering this section. But just looking at the examples, it probably also wants us to talk about using multiplication and division in this section. Or if it didn't, if it wanted us to talk about that somewhere else, but I guess we're a little ahead of schedule. What if we have an equation that looks like this? Seven times X equals nine. Well, once again, this is based on the idea that we have an equation Quality. Two things are equal to each other. And if two things are equal to each other, and we do the same thing to both of them, there should still be equal. I mean, if, my, if we think of my hands as being equal, and we add to their height, or we subtract their height, as long as I'm doing the same thing to both my hands, they'll stay at the same height. The idea here, let me write it down. We can divide both sides of an equality by almost any number. Um, there is a little parenthetical remark here. We can't divide by zero. But we can divide both sides of an equality by a non-zero number. Without changing the equality. And the classic situation is that we have something times our variable equals something else. And we want x. We want x by itself on one side of the equal sign. Well, if you divide both sides of this equality by the something in front of x, then on the left, we have cancellation. x equals b divided by a. Taking this idea, and going back to the example I put up, if we divide both sides by seven, x equals Nine sevenths. Finally, and I'll pause for any questions after we get through the arithmetic operations. We 
we can multiply both sides of an equality by the same number without changing the equality. And the standard reason we would do this is to get rid of division. If we have something that looks like x divided by a equals b, and we multiply both sides of this equality by A, cancellation occurs, and X equals B times A. Did I have an example? I didn't. Example, X divided by seven, equals four. Let's say we want to get rid of that seven. We can multiply both sides by seven. X is 28. So before we take this and complicate it a little, does anybody have any questions about what's come so far? Then for a lot of real world examples, you are not just going to have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division by itself, you're going to have some combination of the arithmetic operations. Something like 2x plus 5 equals 9. And this tends to be where people, I mean, even college age students in my college algebra classes sometimes struggle because students will see that we have multiplication and they'll see that we have addition and they'll say, well, we know that to undo multiplication, it requires division. We know that to undo addition, it requires subtraction. So, We presumably want to either do a division or do a subtraction, but people sometimes, it's not always clear to students which of those two operations we want to do. And the sort of fancy sounding advice I don't know how fancy it is in reality, but the fancy sounding advice is that to solve an equation, you should undo the worker 
Nothing like a, a misspelling to make stuff sound less fancy. You should undo the order of operation. which serves as an excellent example. We'll do this problem, but we'll put it in our pocket for a moment. This is a good excuse to make sure that we all remember what the order of operations are. So suppose we have something like two plus seven divided by, or maybe division is kind of annoying. Let's do multiplication instead. Two plus seven times three. So we look at this, and we see that we've got addition and we've got sub uh, multiplication. So then we ask, well, which of those do we do first? And this question matters because you'll get different answers depending on which you do first. If you do the addition first, two plus seven is nine times three is 27. If you do the multiplication first, this is two plus 21, which is 23. So this matters. You get different answers depending on which of these orders of operations you follow. Of the answers on the board, which is correct, Multiplication first. And Chemidis is excuse my dear Aunt Sally is a memory aid for which um, operations you do first. In PEMNIS, we've got, let me go to a new frame, P for parentheses, E, for exponentials, I do not think we'll be talking about exponentials in this class, but M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, S for subtraction. And you look at the operations you're performing. Here, you're performing an addition and you're performing a multiplication. And you go to this string of letters and you read left to right and you ask, well, what 
letter shows up first, and in PEMDIS, multiplication shows up before addition, M shows up before A. So the multiplication comes first. Parentheses, a comment on this. But if you want to do the addition first, I mean, what if you want to say, well, first we add two and three, two and seven, sorry. And then we multiply by three. And that's the order I want to do things in. Well, the point of having P come first, the point of parentheses being first, is that we can always make an operation happen earlier than it would otherwise by throwing in parentheses. If we put a parenthesis around that two plus seven, now we have a P and an M. And PEMDIS says, well, P comes before M, so you better take care of that parenthesis first. This is kind of an aside, but just Just looking ahead to stuff that I know from personal experience causes students grief down the line. I don't know exactly, exactly is making me sound much better. I don't know at all what um, the local or Nebraska schools do as far as calculators go, if students use graphing calculators, if students don't. But I mean, something that's a pretty elementary skill that students still struggle with is graphing on a graphing calculator and particularly graphing something like that on a graphing calculator. Because students will go to their calculator and they will read out, okay, one divided by x minus four, one divided, by x minus four. And the great curse of this kind of error is that it doesn't spit up an error message. The calculator creates this graph for them, but they've made an error because the calculator is following the order of operation. The calculator says C is D for division and S for subtraction. And it says, okay, well, division comes first. So we're going to start by doing the division. And then comes S. So we will do the subtraction. And that is a different graph from the graph we want. And again, parentheses come to our rescue. If you want to make sure something happens earlier in the order of operations, if you want this subtraction to come before the division, then we can put parentheses around it. 
and we will get sort of the, I, I don't know why our calculator is giving us such a badly drawn graph, but it will more or less give us what we're looking for. So that was in one sense, kind of a detour, except, well, first of all, it is important to know. Second of all, I mention order of operations when I talk about solving these equations. So two times x, plus seven. If we follow PEMNIS and that equaled something, two x plus, man, I'm just making stuff up in my head. I don't know why seven came from. Two x plus five, equals nine, we've got multiplication and we've got addition. And Pemnus says, well, multiplication comes first, then addition. When we say to undo the order of operations, what we mean is to go in reverse. We've got addition that we need to get rid of. We have multiplication that we need to get rid of. When I say we need to get rid of it, what I mean is that our goal is to get x by itself on the left-hand side of the equality. So to get x by itself, that addition can't be there, and that multiplication can't be there. So we need to get rid of the addition, and we need to get rid of the multiplication. And when we say we're undoing the order of operations, we're saying start on the right, and whatever the first thing on the right is, get rid of it first. So we need to get rid of addition. We need to get rid of multiplication. But we'll get rid of the addition first. We'll subtract five from both sides. Two times x equals two four. equals four. You're exactly correct. Thank you. I was thinking ahead because now we just have multiplication to undo multiplication. Requires division. And four divided by two is a two. And um, you could you can solve some kind of complicated looking expressions just with what we have done today. I should say complicated looking equations. An expression doesn't have a solution. 2x minus 5 divided by 4 equals 3. So, what have we got here? Now, it's always just like I did. in the calculator, 
If we've got a fraction, we should imagine that the top and bottom of the fraction are in parentheses. At least if anything is happening in the top and the bottom. So let's think that we have parentheses here. Then we've got parentheses, and we've got multiplication, and we've got subtraction, and we've got division. But, and this is why it's so important to think of the numerator of the fraction as being in the parentheses. Is when we undo the order of operations, we don't start with subtraction. That's because everything inside of the parentheses is just its own unit that we'll deal with right here at the very end. So what we actually have here We have parentheses and we have division. So the first thing we should do is get rid of the division because we're undoing the order of operations. We're going from right to left. We undo division with multiplication. And now we have some parenthetical statement equals 12. And when, once you've reached this point, where the entire side of the equality you're working with is inside parentheses. The parentheses have done their work and are no longer necessary. These parentheses say, well, we want to do this 2x minus 5 first. And yes, there's nothing else on the left. There's only the 2x minus 5. So we don't need those anymore. So what should our next step be? Add five is correct, thank you. As we're going from right to left, we start there and we see S. So we add five to both sides. Two X equals 17. Now there's only one operation happening. That multiplication is happening. So that's what we now have to get rid of. Divide both sides by two. X is 17 over two. So we're going to continue this um, tomorrow. I am going tomorrow.